Now that we have a good understanding about how to create a method and how to use that method inside of a class, I want to look at an important aspect of methods, and that is their parameters. You'll notice in this example that the draw square method does not have any parameters or anything being passed to it. It would just go on about its business without having a parameter. In this video, what I want to look at is what if we add a parameter to a method? And in order to do that, what I've done is created two classes, Calc 101, as in Calculator 101, and Calc 101 Runner. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two integer values, n1 and n2, the first assigned to 20, the second assigned to 10. Then I'm going to construct an object of the Calc 101 class, and that object reference is going to be math. Now you say there's nothing inside of Calc 101. Well, you'd be right, so let's put something there so we have a method to use. The method that we're going to want to use is called add, and it has a simple task of taking in two values and adding them together. If I want to take in two values, I'm going to have to add some parameters. And so I add two integer parameters, num1 and num2. Notice that when I add them, that they have a data type, and they also have an identifier. Anything inside of the parentheses when a method is created are called formal parameters. Or they are identifiers used in a method to stand for the value that is passed to them. And we're going to be passing some values to them very soon. Also, I want you to note that the formal parameters are separated by a comma. So if you have more than one parameter, you're going to separate it with a comma. And another important note here that I want to make is that all formal parameters must have a data type. When declaring a value in a method, sometimes you can leave off a data type, and it is assumed to take on the data type that is before it. But in this case, and with formal parameters, you can't do that. So if I tried to do something like this and take off the data type, this would result in an error. Every single formal parameter has to have a data type. It will not assume that the data type you meant for the first one is going to be the data type you mean for the second one. So now that we know what formal parameters are, let's add something to the method body. And as I said, the purpose of the add method is to add two values together. And so I've created a variable called sum, and I'm taking num1 and num2, which are the formal parameters, and I'm going to add them together. Once added, I'm going to display a result for the user, printing out the first and second values with a plus sign in between, and then equals whatever the value of sum is. We have finished our add method, so let's go back to the runner class and utilize the method that we just created. And we do that by using the object, which is math, and then adding the method, which is add. And notice that we're using the two variables from the top of the program, n1 and n2, so that we could add those two together. These parameters also have a name, and their name is actual parameters or arguments. They're the values that are being passed to the formal parameters. And so when this runs, the actual values, 20 and 10, would be passed over to the formal parameters, num1 and num2. They would be added together, and they would print out the result. So let's see how this would work out if we were to run this program. We're always going to start with the main method. We create our two variables, n1 and n2. We create our object, and then we're going to make a call or invoke the method. Saying math.add n1 n2 is just like saying math.add 20 10. So then we'd go over to our calc class and the actual parameters n1 and n2 would be passed over to the formal parameters num1 and num2. num1 and num2 are 20 and 10, so those two would add together, and sum would now be 30. So now that we have a sum, we can move on to the system out print line method, which is going to print out the number, a plus sign, the second number, and the sum, and the output would look something like this, 20 plus 10 equals 30. The add method would then be done. We would go back to the main method. The call of the add method would be done, and therefore the main method would be done. And so now we see how formal and actual parameters connect. In this next part, what I'd like to talk about is how formal and actual parameters must be the same. And in order to do that, I've created two classes, the student class and the student runner class. 
And inside of the student class, we have a method called print information. It's a simple method that's going to take in three variables, name, age, and GPA, and print them out. So it should say name and print out whatever name is passed, age, print out the age, GPA, print out the GPA. So over here, we've created an object of the student class so that we can use the student class. And I want to show you three ways in which formal and actual parameters have to be the same. And so in the first example, what I have here is stu.printInformation that is correctly calling this method over here, but there's a problem. Maybe you can see it, and the problem is this. I have four parameters over here. I have Darth Vader 66 5.04. What's the problem with that? I only have three formal parameters over here. And this last parameter is just getting lost. Java will not let you do this, and it will throw an exception or error. So formal and actual parameters must be the same in quantity. If you have three formal parameters, you have to have three actual parameters. Let's clear that out and give you another example. This example would also result in an error. Notice that I have three strings in the actual parameters, 66, 5.04, and Darth Vader. The quantity is the same, but the data type is not. It needs string, int, and double. And this is string, string, string. And Java would not let us perform this method because the data types are not matching up. So data type is another way that they must be the same. And let's look at the third example. This would also result in an error. And hopefully you can see why. The data types are the same. They're just out of order. On the actual parameters, it's int double string, and on the formal parameters, it is string int double. So the third way that formal and actual parameters must be the same is that they must be the same in sequence in order for Java to run correctly. So this last example is going to show the correct implementation of the print information method. Notice the name is a string, it's first, int age, is second and double GPA is last. Now technically you could have an integer here because an integer only takes up four bytes and using a widening conversion you can pass an integer into a double. You could not pass a double into an int. So saying that the data type has to be the same is true but there's a little exception being widening conversions. And if you want to know more about widening conversions, please do see my video on that topic. So this would work just fine, and it would print out name, Darth Vader, age 66, GPA 5.04. Now we've seen in the last couple examples ways that the formal and actual parameters need to be the same. If they're not the same, they would cause an error or throw an exception. But what I'd like you to show you in this example is a way that the formal and actual parameters do not have to be the same. And that is in name. Notice I created a string variable called x, an int variable called y, and a double variable called z in the student runner. And then I passed these three values, x, y, and z, over to my print information method. This will work just fine and print out Darth Vader 66 and 5.04. From this brace here to this brace here, the variables are known as x, y, and z. But when they make it over here, from this brace to this brace, they're going to be known as name, age, and GPA. They absolutely do not have to be the same. In fact, in most cases, they will not be the same. Because what if I had another name that I wanted to use, and another int, and another double? I wouldn't want to reuse these exact same variables. Now. If by happenstance they happen to be the same, name, age, and GPA, it will work just fine. But an important point is the identifiers do not have to have the same name. So putting it all together, method parameters come in two forms, formal and actual. And where would you find the formal? They're going to be located where a method is defined. And formal parameters are going to have two parts, a data type, which must always be there, and an identifier. The actual parameters, or the arguments, are located where a method is called or invoked. So when you're using a method and sending information, those are called actual parameters. Formal and actual parameters must match up in three ways, and that is quantity, data type, and sequence. Finally, the formal and actual parameters do not need to have the same identifiers. If they have one name in one method and then they're passed into another method, 
the name identifier does not have to be the same. It can be, and it won't cause problems, but in most cases, it is not going to have the same name. Understanding how parameters get from a method call into a method heading via actual parameters and formal parameters is extremely important in understanding how methods work. Understanding formal and actual parameters will go a long way in understanding exactly how methods are used. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you like videos like this one, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.